Hey, what's up, world? And welcome to the 56th edition of the Take One Podcast. And um, I'm going to make this intro a little bit short because I want to get into a you know, some of the stuff that I'm going to get into this episode, because I got a lot of stuff to kind of cover, well, not, yeah, basically, yeah, I got a lot of stuff to cover, and um, I'm going to be, I'm trying to make it still, you know, the 20, 30 minute mark or whatever this episode, so, yeah, I'm I'm not going to be bullshitting, I'm not going to be running through stuff, but, you know, I'm still going to give, try and give you a good quality podcast, but, this episode, as you can tell from the title, I'm going to be talking about what I think is going to be the highest gross in the top five highest gross in films of this month, December, as well as I'm going to be touching on to the box office as I do every single week uh, now. So uh, without any further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So there are a few films that are coming out this month uh, is a film. Well, actually, some films had already came out. But they were in limited release. Uh, one of the films is a film actually I really ha- am wanting to see. Ever since I saw the first trailer. And I haven't seen this movie per se. Well, I, I haven't seen this movie. But I have seen extensive, detailed movie reviews of this movie. And you guys probably know exactly what I'm talking about. And it's uh, The Room. And so, James Franco is uh, basically a part of this project called The Disaster Artist that basically goes behind the scenes of how this movie was made. And so the movie came out in limited like cities or whatever uh, this past weekend. But if I believe so, I believe it's hitting, yeah, it's, uh, it's hitting worldwide this weekend. So that's one of the movies that is coming out uh, this week. And I'm going to be talking about that a little bit more, which I guess you could say I can run through it right now since I'm going to be talking about it anyway in the upcoming segment. So, uh, but basically this is a movie that when I first was hearing about The Room and how crazy it is and how so bad that it's good, I was automatically intrigued. Ever since like of years of seeing different people's reviews and I don't even know why I haven't even gotten rented or you know just bought the movie and just watched it for myself which i am planning on doing i probably won't do it before i see the movie but i'm going to end up doing it and uh but after seeing review after review after review of these extensive extensive uh reviews i kind of feel like i've seen the movie without actually seeing the full form the full movie or whatever and This is a movie, The Disaster Artist, I'm talking about, that seems a bit of intriguing as the film itself. The film itself, a lot of people would tell you that seeing it is a very special film because this guy, Tommy Wiseau, he is a weird guy that him, you know, just, I mean, kudos to him. For wanting to be an actor, to putting it all online, to putting all of his money down <clears throat> to fund his own movie and put it out there for people to see. I mean, I don't, I'm not entirely sure if he actually thinks it's a, it's a great movie. I mean, even now, I don't know if he thinks that it's a great movie or if he just realizes that yeah, it is a bad movie, but a lot of people like it. So he, that suffices. I don't know, but more than likely he ended up making it and tried to put it out there and all that stuff uh, to get an Oscar nomination, if I'm not mistaken. So obviously he thinks that it's a, it was a good film at one point. If he, if he doesn't think that right now, and this movie goes behind the scenes and I just, it looks like, I don't know. It is so intriguing. It's kind of like, um, John Schnepp came out with the documentary The death of Superman lives, what happens? Just going into this movie that was never made, but was in production, and they had everything for the script, all this craziness about Superman and Nicolas Cage is going to do it. And so it ended up stopped production. They ended up deciding not to make it. Like, I think think it was like right before it was about to actually start shooting. They stopped it. 
and he John Schnepp goes into the documentary of just covering what all was involved in this. And this movie seems like it was dead without being an actual documentary, but just a re... I ain't gonna say... Uh, re... I, I guess you could say... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? But just, you know, just going over what it took to make the movie. And you got James Franco playing uh, Tommy Wiseau and... Just everything that he did to get this movie made. And it just, I, I'm, I'm very curious to see it because I've heard nothing but good things about it. I heard nothing but good things about it. And I definitely am going to go see it. This is a movie that is on my radar. And um, hopefully I get some enjoyment out of it. And I'm definitely going to go watch The Room because it, I, I mean, I guess... Like, cause what I'm hearing is that you don't have to have seen The Room in order to watch this film. Because either you can watch the go watch The Room first and then watch this film, or you can watch this film and go watch The Room first. Do whatever you do. It's whatever. But this movie looks like it's going to be funny. And you guys, if you paid attention to my podcast and movie reviews, comedies really don't grab me. Like, unless they look like it's funny or if they have a good premise that captures me. And this movie looks like, it, this movie has a great premise. Don't don't even get it twisted. Don't even get it twisted. I ain't gonna say it looks like it has a great um, premise because it does. Man, it looks like it's funny. It really looks like it's funny. At the least entertaining. So I'm definitely gonna go check this out. This is a movie that is on my radar and I really wanna see what they do with it. And yeah, like I said, I've heard nothing but things about it. So moving on, I spent a lot of time on that. Um, the next movie that actually came out uh, this past weekend as well. I don't know if it's going to a wide release, but I am intrigued by this movie as well. It's a movie called The Shape of Water. And this is a, uh, gosh, what's his name? Um, uh, Guillermo del Toro. There we go. I was thinking about Benicio del Toro. Uh, I don't know, but and, and this is so funny because a lot of times when I'm thinking of trying to think of Benicio del Toro, I always think of Guillermo del Toro. So it, it's like when I'm trying to think of one name, I always think of the other name at different points. But in any case, this movie was something that wasn't on my radar until I heard about it um, online, and you know I saw the trailer, and I'm like. This movie looks like it's pretty cool because I'm I'm kind of into science fiction and, you know, just kind of like weird type movies. And I do like Guillermo del Toro's style. You know, I do like how he does things. Um, I don't know if I've seen every, I, I doubt if I've seen every single movie that he's done. But I know, I love Blade 2. That's one of my favorite movies of all time. I love Hellboy 2, which is kind of weird. I think, I think he did, come, matter of fact, I think he came off of Hellboy 2 not long and then did Blade 2, or it may have been like the other way around, but I do like his style, and I've seen Chris, um, Crimson, what is that movie called? I ain't gonna, no, it's not Crimson Tide, uh, Crimson Peak, I believe that's the name of the movie. I liked it. Uh, the movie wasn't the best, but I did like it. I liked his style into his gothic and all that stuff, so I was a big, I ain't gonna be a big fan, but I, I did like it. And so this is a movie that has a style written all over it. It reminds me really of the character from Hellboy. I don't know his name, but I don't if you've seen Hellboy the movie, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's the guy who's like basically he's a fish guy, you know, whatever. I have to go back. I don't remember the name, but you guys know who I'm talking about. This way it kind of reminds me of like the origin story of that character. Even though it's not, is what it reminds me of. But it looks like it's good. I heard that it's like kind of like a romance type story, the you know, uh, drama, whatever. So I'm not expecting to go into there and think that he's going to be a part of this bigger picture of like the Avengers or anything like that. But it looks interesting. So wherever I can find it, uh, I, from what I can see, the closest theater is across town from me. And um, I don't know if it's worth the go, <laughs> but you know, it's especially with me being so busy having to drive that far now unless it's an early screening or if it's a big movie that i want to go see at that specific theater i i don't see myself making my way over there 
But I mean, if it's at a theater that's closer or if it hits worldwide, then you know, I can go see it, you know, like about 15, 20 minutes away, I'll go do it. But I mean, overall, whenever I can see this movie, when it comes to the VOD or, you know, DVD or whatever, I'm gonna check it out because it looks very, very interesting. Also, uh, what other movies you got out? I'm gonna try and go through these, um, try and run through them. <laughs> But um, just getting started, which is the Morgan Freeman and um, Tommy Lee Jones movie. Um, I'm not really too keen on this. It's a comedy. And like I said, I'm, I, a lot of times comedies don't really grab me. This movie, it could be funny. It couldn't. It, it probably not. I haven't seen it yet. I have really no plans on the, going to go see it. But who knows? This might be one of those movies where, you know... I end up seeing the stuff that I want to see in the theaters. I want to go to the show. So I'm like, damn, you know, I'm going to go, go see this. And I probably might end up just go checking it out. And I probably might end up walking out, liking it, loving it, disliking it, hating it, whatever. But I mean, that's one of the movies that's coming out. It, it seemed kind of, it seemed decent. So I don't know. I'm, I may end up checking it out, but I'm, it's not on my radar as far as movies I want to see, especially toward the end of the year. Another movie that's coming out this month is um, I, Tanya. I, Tanya is about Tanya Harding, played by, uh, uh, what's her name? Gosh, uh, she played in Suicide Squad. How can I forget her name? Um, Margot Robbie. There we go. Margot Robbie. And uh, it's just about Tanya Harding and the whole situation that went on with her and the whole ice skating thing and what her husband and her were involved in uh with another skater if you don't know the story uh just go look it up but it was a uh, it was something that made news headlines or whatever and so this movie if i'm not mistaken is about just her before the situation leading up to the situation i guess after i'm not entirely sure but i mean i would think if you're covering a person that was involved with a situation like that you would cover that situation since i don't think anything before and after that was really exciting i'm she didn't become like a really major huge skater after that and you know she didn't become an actress or you know anything above this whole situation so I would think that it's about this whole situation. This looks intriguing. I don't know if it's going to do that good. I don't know if there is people that seen it or if like, you know, there are reviews out, but it doesn't look like it's going to be good. I haven't seen too many, you know, trailers on it or too many, too much advertisement or too many advertisements for it. So I don't know. It's it just it, it may be good, it may not, but I'm looking toward it may not end up being good, but you know, I've been wrong about a lot of things. Okay. But so I don't know. May check it out, may not, may wait wait till like VOD or, you know, uh D V D when it comes out. So um another movie that's coming out, it's just like small indie film. I don't know if you guys heard of it, but it's a movie called Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. And um, I don't know if it's going to make that much. Nah, I'm just fucking with you. That movie is going to be a big, 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 big deal. Um, I'm not a huge Star Wars fan. I've been on board ever since Episode 7. I mean, I've seen all the other ones, even like before Episode 7 came out. Uh, I've seen all the ones, uh, I think it was like, maybe it had to be like the late 90s or something like that. I've seen the originals and I've seen, I've I seen two of the prequels in theaters. The se Yeah, actually the first and second, um, number episode one and episode three I saw in theaters. Episode two, I kind of missed that, but I heard, uh, I know a lot of people think that's the weakest out of those, out of that trilogy. But, uh, I've been on board, really on board with this whole Star Wars thing ever since, I mean, well, I say heavier than I was before, ever since episode seven, I've seen episode seven in theaters, uh, I've seen, um, Rogue One in theaters, and I love both of them, I love both of them, they're actually pretty good movies, and, um, I just can't wait to see this one, this one was, this looks like it's gonna be good, um, I don't know, they haven't really gave out the storyline or anything when it comes to it. But as far as, you know, my anticipation, I think it's going to be a really good film. I don't know if it's going to be too, too much action. Like, looking at the trailer, it, it looks like it's going to be a lot of action. But I don't know. It looks like Ray and um, 
Luke Skywalker are going to be on the the planet that she went to go find Luke on the whole majority of the movie. That's what it plays in my mind. I don't know for sure, but that's what it seemed like. The majority of the shots that we see with Ray and Luke are on the planet. So that got me to thinking that majority of their scene and, you know, just their their presence are going to be on that island. Now, you do see a scene where she is being, like, controlled by uh, uh, Snoke. I forgot what, like, General Snoke or, uh, I don't know. But she's being, like, held by Snoke by, I guess, you know, the force powers or whatever. So I'm guessing toward the end of the movie she is she's going to make her way off the island but i want to say that's probably during the third act but anyway i'm getting off the thing and i'm talking too much about it but i i am very excited to see this film i am very excited to see this film i haven't got my tickets yet so hopefully i can be one of the lucky ones that can get my tickets toward the you know the date of but you know it i don't know i i definitely am going to go check this out this looks like it's going to be a damn a damn good movie and i hope that i can go see it twice within one day hopefully i'm not too tired i'm gonna try to do the double feature with episode seven and episode eight in one day if i can't then i'll be just happy just seeing episode eight and seeing what they do with that so it is what it is uh the next movie that's coming out is ferdinand this is a movie that my son definitely wanted to go see I'm not really too, you know, into wanting to go see it, but you know, this one, this could possibly be one of those movies where I didn't think too much of it, and I go see it, and I end up liking it or end up loving it. Uh, just simply take me back to Moana last year. I didn't think anything of that movie, and I went to go see it with my son, and I end up loving it. Uh, and it was just like a couple other movies. I know Kubo was the same way, you know, and it's uh, even like Baby Boss. That was, that was not like, you know, it was kind of like a kid's movie, you know, as far as just the understanding and the plot line of it. But I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I really did. But this movie might end up being one of those movies. Uh, but even if I don't enjoy it, if he enjoys it, then that makes me happy because I know that I didn't waste my money. And uh, I like to see him happy, of course. You know, I'm a proud father. I love to see my son smile. And this is a movie that he keeps telling me that he want to go see. So, we definitely going to go check this out. Uh, and then, one of the other movies that's coming out this month is Jumanji. Jumanji, I, I, want, I don't want to speak too much on it. But, I don't really have too much high expectations of it. Now, I've seen this new TV spot that kind of looks, you know, a little bit better than what they put out with the... Uh, other trailers that they've had out before, but I, I'm, I'm sticking with my whole thing. Uh, Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle, is a sequel in a sense. I believe is like a uh, soft reboot, because more than likely, just like with any movie like this, they will want pre, well, not prequels, but you know, sequels. They will want a trilogy or so uh, to follow it, and so. I'm a big fan of the first Jumanji, even though, you know, you go back and look at it, it is dated with the CG and effects and all that stuff, but it was a damn good movie, it was a good movie, I loved it uh, when I was a kid, I had to go back and revisit it, I haven't seen it in a while, but one of the things that I did like about Jumanji that this movie takes away was just the mystique of just the whole Jumanji, just the mystery of it, because you never got to see the jungle, but the things that live in the jungle was coming out the game. Other than that, you never got to see it, and so it made it mysterious. Even though you know Jumanji is the jungle, it was kind of dark. The movie was dark. It was like it was lighthearted, but at the same time, it had its dark moments and stuff. And it just seemed like it was very. It just, I don't know, the jungle just, it had a mystery behind it, a, a total mystery that made the movie good, because you never got to see inside the jungle, and that was something I always wanted to see, was like, how does this jungle look, and we get to see it with this movie, but they took the whole mystique away from it, it doesn't look... I don't know, it just doesn't carry the weight like the first one has, especially, well, it just from the trailer, what I got from the trailer, because I haven't seen the movie yet, but... It doesn't seem like it's going to be a good movie, per se. 
Uh, it's, I don't know. It just, it, it seemed like they're just trying to make it a full fledged comedy rather than make it a good film. Now, don't get me wrong. The first one in a sense was kind of a comedy, but it has dark moments. This one doesn't seem like it's going to have really too many dark moments. It's like, it's going to be more of a comedy action and it just, I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm be open mind when I go see it, but I'm really not expecting too much from it. Now, hopefully my mind changed when I go see it. And I can go and be like, yo, this is a good ass movie. Go see it. Duh, duh. But as of right now, I don't think it's going to offer me too much. But in any case. <coughs> oh, crap. Yeah, my throat kind of got a little dry. Uh, let's go ahead and run through these last ones so I can go ahead and get to the uh, box office. Greatest Showman. Uh, this movie is a, definitely is a movie that I'm going to go see. Has Hugh Jackman in it. And it looks like it's going to be good. It puts me in a mind frame. Uh, if you ever seen the other Hugh Jackman movie uh, by Christopher Nolan called The Prestige, that's basically what it puts me in the mind of. But it's supposed to be kind of like a factual, fictional kind of mixture of the guy Barnum, uh, the guy who who basically p created Barnum, uh, Raining Brothers Barnum and Bailey Circus, and just kind of follow how you know how he created it. And um, it looks like it's gonna be good. It looks like I'm definitely gonna go see. It. I didn't really have no interest in it when I saw when I first saw the first trailer, but after a while, after seeing it over and over, and then you know just seeing more about it, I'm like, man, this movie might end up being good. So yeah, it's most definitely on my radar to go check out and seeing what they possibly can do with it, and um, seeing if I can get some enjoyment out of it. I'm definitely gonna go check it out. It. This movie that looks like it's very good. Um, another movie that's coming out is Pitch Perfect 3. I wasn't too big of a fan of... I ain't gonna say Mel. I ain't gonna say, even, matter of fact, I ain't gonna say it was a fan. Because I've never seen any other Pitch Perfect films. Even though I've heard that, you know, the films are good. And even like this guy I used to work with, that's one of his favorite films was the first Pitch Perfect. And, you know, and it's just... It wasn't anything that really caught my attention. I may go back and I may go and watch the first and second one before the third one come out just to see if it is good to me. But I, I just don't care. I really don't. Um, this one doesn't really intrigue me. Uh, a lot of beautiful ladies on the, a part of the cast. But other than that, I just I don't care. I guess you could say I'm one of them guys that, you know, see a movie like this, like a Magic Mike or this movie and just be like, oh, this is for women. Da, da, da. But then I hear a lot of guys that seen these movies and say Pitch Perfect, are, like, it's good. Like, you know, the first one was good. The fir the second one, they I've heard that it's not as good as the first one. But I've heard nothing but really, I really hear nothing but good things. Um, and then, you know, a movie like Magic Mike, you know, I've heard that that's good, you know, and this and that, even though, you know, that movie is more than, you know, kind of like going for like the female audience, of course, but, you know, it's just, I don't know, like Pitch Perfect, it's just, yeah, it's, it's, it's whatever. <laughs> I may go see it, I may not. Um, another movie that's coming out is Downsizing, which is a movie that was, that intrigued me from the first trailer of what if this actually was happening which i'm while watching the trailer i was thinking like damn what if this was a real thing would i downsize or would i stay this because it's like when you have a certain amount of money it translates to more money when you downsize but then it's an irreversible process so if you downsize you can't reverse back and so i mean to me it's you know it just it's a very it's a very cool concept, you know, saying that, you know, downsizing is the, uh, is, is like solving, is like, uh, basically solving global hunger, you know, just a lot of the world's problems, overpopulation, you downsize, then you ain't got to worry too much about, you know, overpopulating and stuff like that. And, uh, a lot of the waste and consumption and stuff kind of goes down and you know it, just, it seems like a very interesting premise so i'm definitely gonna go check it out um like it's gonna be a good movie all the money in the world that movie i may go check it out that seemed like a movie that i'll go check out you know we don't got nothing to do you know it's a monday or a tuesday or whatever and i'm just like you know I'll just go uh because i don't know it's, it, it, this movie is surrounded by a lot of controversy now it's not because it's surrounded by a lot of controversy because of the whole Kevin Spacey thing and then they having to recast it. But 
I am very, I'm very, like, just surprised of how they went about doing this. So, for those who don't know um, what I'm talking about, All the Money in the World was a movie uh, by Ridley Scott, directed by Ridley Scott. I don't know if it was written by him, but it's directed by Ridley Scott uh, and produced or whatever. And um, he, and so Kevin Spacey was playing a character up in there. And uh, he had the full on kind of like prosthetics, makeup and all that stuff. So he was playing like an older guy and Kevin Spacey is old, but he's, he was playing an older, older guy. And so some stuff came out some weeks ago about Kevin Spacey and a younger boy and some of the stuff along with the whole sexual, rat, sexual assault thing that's been going on in Hollywood lately, stuff, stories that's been coming out. So Kevin Spacey had came out and, you know, basically admitted to possibly doing something. But even then, you know, it's just whatever. But that's a whole different story. So that stuff happened. So what really Scott decided to do was take Kevin Spacey out of the movie. Take, you know, him out of the movie. And in doing so, you have to recast. So I commend him for doing that. And not only doing that, but doing everything in time for the movie to still drop on his release date without having to push it back this basically all of what he did is that he took his parts out of the movie recast the um person recast the 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 character uh christopher Plummer, i believe this was um playing it and he reshot the scenes all of what Ke what kevin spacey did he reshot all of them scenes and he got the other actors to come back on board for a little bit of, for the reshoots and reshoot the scenes that he has with the, the, the character has with their characters. And he did all of this within a short amount of time, editing the movie, probably still editing it, and is going to be able to put it out at the release date that he had it at before, before all this stuff happened. That to me is genius i want I mean, well is genius even a word not i know it's a word but is it the word to use that is freaking i don't even know what to call it that to me it amazes me to not only uncast like take someone out of a movie who probably has a decent amount of like uh presence up in the movie uh take him out of the movie get the money you need to get for reshoots Get the reshoot, basically uh, cast the other person to play that role. Get the other people to come back. Reshoot all of the scenes. I believe they said it was over Thanksgiving weekend. Probably a little bit longer than that. But even still, reshoot all of them scenes. And then edit, edit it back together. And have it out in time for its release date without having to push it back. Not even one week. That to me is crazy. That is amazing that someone could do that. And hopefully this movie turns out good still. Like, I don't know if they, I don't think they're going to put out the version with Kevin Spacey in it. But hopefully this movie does good. You know, I would love to see the difference if there is any difference. But I don't know. It, it looks like it's, I don't know. This movie I may check out just because of that. Just because of that. But um, next is a movie called The Post. Um, it has Tom Hanks and um and uh Meryl Streep. This movie, you know, it it's not really on my radar. I may go see it. I may not. It, it looks decent, but you know, it's it's whatever. Um, it's I don't really have too many expectations for it. So I mean, that's all I really say on that. Um, uh, moving to Molly's Game. I've seen several trailers of it. This definitely is a movie that I am going to go see. It looks really good. It has Jessica Chastain and um, Idris Elba. It looks like they have some good chemistry in there. It looks like it's a good, well-written movie. I don't know. I haven't seen it, but it looks like it's good. It looks like it's going to be a good movie. This is a movie I'm definitely going to check out. I know a lot of people I know probably wouldn't care to see this, but this movie looks like it's something that I'm definitely going to check out, really. Um, and so moving on to the last film that's coming out this month. And last movie, last film that's coming out this year, uh, Phantom Threads by it's the last film by Daniel Day Lewis. 
Um, I'm not too familiar with the work, with the body of work of Daniel Day Lewis, even though I've heard that he is one of, if not the greatest actor to ever live. Uh, I'm not too com familiar with it, so I can't really say too much on, you know, if that's if I if I believe that that's true. But uh, this is a movie I don't I don't really have too much interest in. I really don't. Um, I know a lot of you probably might be like, oh, it's Daniel Day Lewis, but I, 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 like I said, I'm not familiar with his work, so it's not something that excites me. So uh, this may be a hit or miss for me as far as going to go see it. Um, but as of right now, I, 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 you know, it's, it's whatever. So with that all out the way, you got all the movies that's coming out this month. Let me go ahead and just put down what I think the top five highest grossing films is going to be by the end of, well, I say by like two weeks after, you know, they come out after December. Um, so after the movie come out, after the last movie to come out in December, let's just put it like that. Um, so I'm going to start off with number five. Number five, I believe is going to be Ferdinand. It's a kid's movie. It's coming out close to Christmas. It's an alternative to a Star Wars since they actually come out on the same day but you know when you think of Christmas or Thanksgiving and stuff these like family time so families gonna want to go see movies besides seeing Star Wars you know kids might want to go see Ferdinand so I think that would be a I think that would be like a movie that kids would definitely want to go for well, parents will take definitely want to take their kids to go see and I think it's gonna make a good amount of money uh, the next one at number four is The Greatest Showman. This looks like it's going to be a great movie. It looks like it's going to be a great movie. Hugh Jackman is a great actor. He, he, this this looks like it's going to be really good. This looks like it's going to be damn good. It may be higher. It may end up being higher as far as the highest grossing, but I put it at number four. Number three is going to be Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle. Even though I told y'all I don't really particularly think that this movie is going to be any good. Um, but that's not to say that it won't make money. A lot of people, I might not think that it's good or whatever, it, but in, if I end up seeing it, well, when I end up seeing it, I probably might not think that it's good. But there's a lot of people that are probably going to be looking at it like, yo, this is, this is a funny ass movie. Da -da -da. So, I mean, it's whatever. Plus you got The Rock and Kevin Hart, even though a lot of times name, star names, a lot of times don't bring people to movie theater. I think a, there's a lot of fans of the rock and kevin hart to where they're gonna go check this out at least check it out you know um and then number three oh no wow number two is going to be pitch perfect three that has a, a a recognizable ip i mean jumaji is a recognizable ip but i think pitch perfect is more recent with the recent generation of kids of just you know that love the Pitch Perfect movies. Uh, so I think that that's going to make a good amount of money. Um, it is coming off of a, what I hear, a lackluster second movie. That may affect it. I know it affects a lot of other movies. Uh, but I, I, I still think that it's going to make a lot of money. Especially if it ends up, if people end up finding it being really good. Um, number one, you guys already know. You guys already know what movie I think is going to be number one. I definitely think that number one is, is is without a shadow of a doubt is going to be just getting started with Morgan Freeman and um, Tommy Lee Jones. Now, I know a lot of people are like, I'm just playing. It's going to be Star Wars Episode 8, The Last Jedi. That movie is one of those big tempo movies that will do numbers. It will do numbers, like regardless. I don't care what the hell coming out, unless it's a freaking you know Avengers Infinity War coming out on the same day. It's not going like nothing is going to outbeat it. Nothing is going to outbeat it. So that's my whole. Those are my whole predictions for the highest grossing movies of December, which is uh run through them real quick. Like I said, number five, Ferdinand. Number four, The Greatest Showman. Number three, Jumanji: Welcome to the Jungle. Number two, Pitch Perfect three, and number one, Star Wars Episode eight, The Last Jedi. And so that ends that. So let me go ahead and jump into these box office results 
of this past weekend. Since we didn't really have no major, major film that like came out this weekend, well, this past weekend, um, when it comes down to it, the predictions are really still the same, you know? I mean, you might have different numbers, of course, with the um, movies or whatnot, but when it comes down to it, it's all the same. So, um, <clears throat> you got Coco at number one, bringing in $26 million, which brings its total box office to $108 million. And this is the second weekend. You got Justice League, who sadly is should still be at number one. But is at number two, bringing in 16 million, which brings this overall total to 197 million on this third weekend. Then you have Wonder, who is what well, you have Wonder coming in at number three, bringing in 12 million and bringing this overall total to 88 million at on this third weekend. And then you have Thor Ragnarok bringing in nine million and that brings his total to two hundred and ninety one million on a one hundred and eighty dollar budget yeah they, they you know I don't know i I might make another I might do this on another podcast to talk about these recent superhero movies um actually I am so yeah look out for that uh and then you got number five one that's rounding up the top five is daddy's home two bringing in seven million which brings his total to eighty two million on a sixty nine million dollar budget. Now, this, I don't know, it's, it's kind of like a dead weekend until, like, this, until this coming weekend. Because it really, you really don't have too many movies that are absolutely doing too much. You know, uh, especially, like, the this past weekend and the other weekend after that, or well, weekend before that. Because either you don't have any movies that's coming out or any movies that's going to make any significant dent. Now, with some movies that did come out, uh, like I said, The Disaster Artist came out. But it was only at like a limited release. So, more than likely when it hit worldwide, it's going to do a lot more. And that brought in a hundred, well, a hundred. That brought in one million dollars. Uh, and that came in at number 12. So, I mean, and that's, I'm not, I didn't really expect it to hit the number one spot. Uh, anything, so I don't know, it may make its way to the top five once it hit worldwide, because it only hit certain cities, in certain theaters, so, uh, you know, maybe it'll get bigger once it hits worldwide, so we'll see, um, and then The Shape of Water came out, which is like 166000 it was a, kind of a low budget film, so, I don't know, it, it's, I don't know what the budget was, but I don't think it was like a huge number, Maybe could have been just looking at the prosthetics of of like the creature in the trailer, but I mean it is what it is. But in any case, there has really not been no big movies that's been dropping this past weekend that would knock you know certain you know uh, movies down or off the list and all that stuff. So uh, as we get deeper into December, you're gonna start seeing this uh, top five change. Uh, when it comes down to it, Coco was a good movie, so I don't have no problem with it being number one. Justice League, I'm going to address this on another podcast, but yeah, this is very disappointing. Very disappointing because this movie was actually a pretty damn good movie. Pretty damn good movie for it to like not do what it was doing. But I think a lot of the stigma from BVS in people's minds are still in there because even though you had Suicide Squad, which did a lot of money, even though that was a garbage ass film, it had, it made a lot by the end of its run, almost close to a billion dollars. Uh, and then you had Wonder Woman, was actually a pretty good movie itself and made some great money. It did good in the box office. Even though you had those two movies after BVS, this BVS is the closely related. So when you think of Justice League and you think of any other movie in the DCEU that came out, the closest that will come, the closest movie that comes to your mind is, you know, uh, BVS, because they had three out of the six uh, Justice League members in that movie. So that's the closest thing. So when you think of, when people think of Justice League coming out, the thing that popped in their mind is BVS. I remember seeing it and it wasn't that good. So I don't know if this movie is going to be good. Whether, whether or not you know what happened behind the scenes of BVS and, you know, stuff that happened behind the scenes of Justice League, 
and um, the whole switching of the directors or even if you don't, e even if you didn't know that the same director who did BVS did this movie, you know, or at least majority of it, you know, it, it still kind of like relates to each other. So I think that really affected it. Wonder is a movie that I may end up going to go see, you know, it's in the top five. It's making some noise, so um, I don't know. I'm, I'm playing around with it. I'm playing around with it. Uh, and then you have uh, Thor Ragnarok, uh, number four, and then Daddy's Home, too. I mean, what's to say about it? Like, you know, Thor Ragnarok was cool, you know. I liked it, you know. It was better than the other Thor movies. I went over the hills for it like everyone else. Daddy's Home, too. I'm definitely going to go check that out. I need to go check that out. I heard it's not as good as the first one, and I really enjoyed the first one. But still, I want to check it out for myself and see uh, if it is good. And so, um, yeah, that that ends that right there. So, this weekend, we're going to have the Disaster Artist come out worldwide. So, I'm still counting that out. It's coming out this weekend. And I believe The Shape of Water is coming out worldwide this weekend. I may be wrong on that, but uh, I believe that that's coming out worldwide as well. But, um... The movies that are making this first run is on this debut weekend is the movie Just Getting Started with Morgan uh, Freeman and Tommy Lee Jones. And then we got the movie I, Tanya that I was talking about uh, coming out this weekend. And there are a couple few other movies, but they're just like, you know, independent films or whatnot. But those are just really the films that's coming out. Um, those films, well, out of those films, I want to say... I think the disaster artist has really the biggest shot of hitting the top five out of like all out of the four movies that I just mentioned. I think yeah, no other movie is gonna hit the top five. I ain't gonna say that like I believe it's gonna. I mean, well, I don't know. You never know. It ha it's got like a big enough buzz. So you know what. I haven't made my top five yet of what I think is going to like be this weekend, but I think uh, it has a big enough buzz to where it may end up cracking the top five. Um, I, Tanya, or Shape of Water, and just getting started. Just getting started, I think, has a chance of hitting the top five, but I haven't really seen too much of that. Plus, I don't know if there is a lot of people that are that is really trying to or just dying or the huh, reverse dying to see this or even just trying to see this or have any interest on seeing it but i think yeah uh, i don't know those are the movies that's coming out this weekend so i mean uh so to get down to it the movies that i think are going to take the top five i think uh i think the the order is going to stay the same but I am going to throw the disaster artist in there. I'm I'm definitely am. I'm not only I ain't gonna say I'm throwing at number one, but I may end up throwing it at number two. Let me see. Uh, where is what did I say that uh freaking oh, crap Justice League was at Justice League. Is blah blah blah. Hold on, give me a moment. I know I could stop this, but in any case, uh, so Justice League May 16 May. I, I, I believe that. Oh shit, because Justice League more than likely is going to make less this coming weekend. Um, I think that, you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna just go ahead and just I'm gonna just go ahead and do it. So I think this weekend, uh, <clears throat> Coco is going to be a number one again. And then at number two, we're going to have the Disaster Artist. And then we're going to have Justice League at number three. And then what was number four? We got Thor three, Thor Ragnarok. And then number five. What was after that? Oh, hold on. I'm tweaking. I'm tweaking. Okay. So I think what it is going to be. Okay, I'm I'm doing this as I'm going along, so I think Wonder Wonder is still gonna be up in there. That ain't going nowhere, uh, unless people just don't want to go see it at all. But I think that's basically what it's gonna be. So these are my predictions for it. So I got my top five right now. 
So we got at number one is going to be Coco. At number two is going to be Justice when well, uh, the Disaster Artist. Number three is going to be Justice League. Number four is going to be Wonder. Number five is going to be Thor Ragnarok. And those are my predictions for this coming weekend. I'm probably going to be wrong. But those are my predictions. Uh, even if the Disaster Artist is in there somewhere, it more than likely may end up being a little bit lower. Probably a number five or number four. But I'm putting it at number two since Justice League is kind of, you know, kind of like losing a lot now. As far as like uh, the numbers, I believe that it's going to uh, be able to get a little bit over Justice League, even if it's by like not that much, you know. But I, I think that's I think it has a good chance of you know being in the top five. So uh, hopefully um, I get to go see it, and hopefully I find out find that it's good. So I mean that's what I'm that's what I'm going with. So. Yeah, those are my predictions for the highest grossing films of December, as well as my predictions for, uh, I guess you could say, the highest grossing films of this weekend. So, um, and that wraps up this episode of the Take One Podcast, episode 56. And I thank you guys for listening and um, do me a favor. Go ahead, hit the thumbs up on this um, video. Uh, share, like, comment and all that good stuff. Even though I did tell you to like it twice, I mean, you could like it twice. I don't know if you can do that or not, but, you know, like it at least one time, you know. Uh, as well as, if you're not subscribed to my channel, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification. That way you'll be notified for anything that drops on my channel. And, uh, again, thank you guys for listening. This has been episode 56 of the Take One Podcast. I will catch you guys on episode 57, which I'm more than likely am going to drop this week. So, I will catch you guys then. Peace.